Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. It's the end of July. Temperatures today going to be up to 97 degrees, which is kind of low compared to some of you guys are getting hit with 115, 120 degrees. Tomato plants get beat up. My plants are beat up from the heat. I want to show you what do you really do to deal with the problem. I have plenty of videos if you want to subscribe and follow me that went over the leaf patterns on here, but I just want to show you that this yellowing in here, that's all from the heat, the plant needing water. It's not a fungal issue. It's not a point of concern. We're also going to do a quick harvest too. I'm going to harvest all the tomatoes that you see as we walk through here. The whole idea is we get beat up. Who wants to be out in the heat when it's 100 degrees? We get behind in the watering. We can get behind in the feeding. Plants can shut down. Tomato plants get beat up. But we can save these guys by increasing the watering. I'm going to show you the basic watering at the base. I have lots of videos on that. But you really want to soak in the soil around the plants every day, every other day during this crazy heat. The plants may look Again, beat up. Maybe the leaves are turning yellow. This is a point where I don't worry about what I've fed them over the season. They're going to get a water-soluble fertilizer. That's just going to give them nitrogen for leaf development. When the temperatures break, it will help the plants. It will help things stay greener. But the consistent watering is going to make a difference. And you can see all that leaf drop or leaf yellowing, that is just from the heat. And because it's losing so many leaves, we want to just give it some water-soluble fertilizer. You can see right down there, hydrogen peroxide. I'm also going to hit these with an antifungal. Even though there are no fungus signs on my plants, I spray them regularly with hydrogen peroxide. And that keeps the leaves really clear. And this is what the plants were looking like about seven days ago. They yellowed like I just showed you. The yellowing, the leaves die. And that's just, you know, what happens. And we're going to be, again, harvesting all these tomatoes. That pattern is just all heat-related and water-related. All right, so let's get to the basics. The five things that we're going to do are pick the tomatoes. No point when the plants are stressed, high heat, to leave the tomatoes ripening on there. Some of them, you know, fully ripened. Some of them getting close. Pick off most of the fruit with color. Bring them in the house and let them finish ripening indoors. So pick the fruit. Next, we're going to water. Number two, feed them with a the water-soluble fertilizer. And just to be clear, a lot of times you hear, stop feeding your plants nitrogen or giving them water-soluble fertilizer because you're going to get too much leaf growth. Well, in this case, a lot of the leaves are dying off. So it's okay to use the water-soluble nitrogen more often to keep the plants you know, or to give the plants what they need to kind of come back and survive as the temperatures begin to, you know, change. And they will. Seems like they're not going to, but they will. So we got one, two, the water-soluble fertilizer, shade cloth, number four, and then putting down some more grass clippings or something else for mulch to help conserve the water. So we already did the first thing. First thing, pick the tomatoes. The group in here that's actually more beat up really don't have a lot of mulch. I've been mulching the other groups of three, the two sets over there, more often. So watering. Now, it does make sense, of course, your plants need water. Again, everything that you see in the way of die-off here is related to watering and heat. You want to give, and if you're not sure, I don't know, it's about 10 seconds. I'm going to give you real-time watering, but you can get a five-gallon bucket, measure up two, four, six inches from the bottom, and then just start filling it with your hose and see how long it takes for that bucket to fill up with two inches of water. Two inches of water is what's great for deep watering. And for me, it's 10 seconds. So the base of the plants, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And that's going to give them a lot of water into the depth of the soil, really past 12 inches. Looks like I need a new nozzle. I smashed it against the cinder block, pulling it up here. You also want to water the surface roots. Tomatoes will send out surface roots. There's surface roots out here too. And it's okay to kind of just water like this. And you're more kind of just spreading the water around, letting it soak into the top two, four inches. The plants really appreciate that. In between the plants where they're sharing, Probably I would do like another 
10 seconds. But you're really wanting to take the time to let the water really soak in. And I would work my way down. Base of the plant, center of the plant, other side of the plant. And that is a really, um, what's the right word? Thorough watering. You know, I was thinking in depth, that's not the right word. It's just thorough. You want to be thorough. You don't want to just do this. That doesn't work. If you're using drip irrigation, you have to figure out the settings to ensure that the water is getting down, I think, a good six inches into the soil. And I would just continue that until the plants are watered well. Temperatures in the mid-90s, maybe other, every other day. Upper 90s, hundreds, probably every day. It's hard, you know, to keep the plants producing. When that heat comes, they want to shut down. They drop fruit, they drop flowers, they stop producing flowers. So that's the second thing. It's just a nice, thorough watering. And when again, every other day, mid to low 90s, every day in some cases, when it's in the upper 90s, full sunny day, or definitely in the hundreds. So after I watered in, that's when I like to give it the water-soluble fertilizer. And you can use, whoo, I got it all over the tomatoes. Any water-soluble is going to work. Um, you just don't need a lot. We are just dropping in some nitrogen throughout that whole root system. And it'd be just like one, two, three, one, two, three, just spreading the nitrogen around. This is a two gallon container. This is probably enough to do this entire bed and then to finish off those beds. So it's two gallons, however the water soluble tells you to mix it across, you know, a space like this size. That's nine plants, just FYI. You don't need a lot, but you're giving back a nutrient that is very fleeting in the garden. Plants use nitrogen. It doesn't you know, store well in the soil. It's just used up really quickly. You're giving it back to the plants. This will help these plants recover and they're gonna look great come mid-August. And I want these to continue to grow all the way through September if I can, because my frost doesn't really come until late October, early November. So, mulching. Any untreated grass works really well. And you just wanna put down Make sure it's nice and loose. One to two inches like that. That will he help keep the water at the root level. The sun that's pounding down will not overheat the roots and put more stress on the plants. It helps cool the soil, the roots down. The plants like that. And I'm gonna go through and do that for the entire bed. I'll show you what it looks like at the end. And then finally, shade cloth. If your temperature's in a prolonged period, mid to upper 90s, hundreds, shade cloth really makes a difference. So. You can use a 50-50 shade cloth if you're like in Maryland or cooler. Or if you're in Maryland, you can also use a 70-30. That means 70% shade. Maryland or hotter, a 70% shade cloth. And I will put that up. I'm just going to put it across the posts up there and let it hang down. That will provide shade to the leaves. That helps out a lot. If you are able to, setting up a nice canopy of shade cloth to cover the leaves and the soil makes a huge difference and you can just leave that up for a week two weeks three weeks until you know the temperatures break and the temperatures start coming down but a combination of these five things is how you would really beat the heat for your tomato plants all right let me put up the shade cloth show you what that looks like here's another example of shade cloth this is a 50 percent shade cloth right now it's the morning sun that's coming in here so it's coming in at a different angle when the southern sun arrives this casts shade over the tomato plants over the soil keeps things cooler. Just FYI, that first variety is really beat up. I'm not gonna grow that anymore. I'm gonna stick with varieties that do well with the temperatures in my garden. You may not have a trellis. It may not be easy to put up the shade cloth. You don't have to, you know, be perfect with it. It can look like uh, basically what I did over here. These are the five things that you can do to help your tomato plant beat the heat. And they're really effective when the temperatures get up into the 90s and even hundreds. Pick the fruit a little bit early, let it ripen inside. Put down mulch, deep watering, water more often. Any water-soluble fertilizer that's organic, just use it at recommended strength. If you're gonna use the chemical types, use it at half strength. They just put in way too much nitrogen. It's just not necessary. I'm affiliated with AgroThrive. It's a wonderful organic water-soluble fertilizer. Find that information out in the video description. And then the shade cloth. You just need to get it on top of the tomato plants. It's great if you can set it up so it keeps the soil cool, but by keeping the leaves cooler 
they're going to use less water and the plants will love you for that. So again, these five things really do make a difference. The plants may still look a little bit beat up, but you're going to protect them. And when the temperatures adjust, they're going to take off again. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'll show you how these plants look in about a week to 10 days. And if you want more information on hydrogen peroxide, check out my YouTube channel because that's what I've been spraying these plants with. It's keeping away the leaf spot. It's keeping away early blight. Thanks so much for watching. And again, please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. Thanks for watching.